Christian Carpenter here with Everything Residential Commercial. Hopefully you guys love that intro because man oh man that pumps me up. I'm ready to go build something right now. It's about 10 o'clock at night. Anyways, as you can see we're going to start demoing right here. We're going to demo all the grass, we're going to demo all the concrete, the bushes, the shrubs, anything in the backyard has to go. You want a luxury patio cover, whatever's in the backyard has got to go. So we get a plate compactor and we just compact the dirt as is once it's all demoed. And those vines on the right, that all gets removed here, you'll see at the end. But we just compact it, bring some ABC rock in, and uh, I had to bring that tractor in and out of there, I don't know, probably more than 50 times passing through that right there. Now it doesn't look like much, I probably have two or three inches on both sides, and uh, the S70 Bobcat's way smaller than this. This is a 242 D3 Caterpillar. So we bring some structural rock in. A couple things I want to note here about the patio cover, you'll see here in this next video. So the patio cover is freestanding. That's how it was engineered. We had a setback problem, so we couldn't attach it to the house. So it had to be freestanding. We had to have a half inch gap between the house and the patio cover. And don't even get me started about that. But as you see here, we're digging, we're digging six foot piers. It has to, the pole has to go in the ground six foot deep. So we have to get quarter inch steel. You see Nate right there with the planer. We plane the post, put the steel like as a sleeve around it, and then bolt it, you see the bolts up there? And then once bolted on and secured, we popped them in place, called for an inspection, they approved it. And once again, this is the engineer and the architect dealing with this, not me. But, uh, and this way it can withstand, like I said, 115 mile an hour wind for three second durations. That's what it's engineered for. But uh, look at this, accidents do happen. Uh-oh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, so accidents do happen. Uh, but you see right here, we pop, put the beam down, fixed it. I need to put the forks on self-leveling mode, so I don't have to keep moving them, I guess. Lesson learned. But we get the beam in place, and uh, you'll see here shortly the gap I'm talking about. Silly rules, very silly rules. So we got the beam in place, we bolted it up on there. Uh, you'll see here, there's some bolts later on, you'll, you might see it. Get it bolted on. We have two by 10 rafters, is what we got working here. Big old monster two by 10 rafters going up there. We have a quarter inch per foot slope, for the roof, we got some joist hangers on the right side. It sits on top on the left side so we can get that height. It's about nine and a half feet up there. Uh, Nate's about six foot tall. You can see that right there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it right there. We're getting ready for concrete. And as, as you zoom in right here on the bottom right, that's the steel tube right there. Concrete column. I'm here at the job site, check this out. Good morning, it's Monday. Christian with Everything Residential and Commercial. We're out here doing a stamped concrete job. Check it out, we got color in here, let's take a look. So we got this brown color right here, it'll dye a little bit lighter, it'll dry a little bit lighter, because we're trying to match the pavers over there. You can see those pavers? So at the front of the house, we have something called a concrete line pump. It's pretty much like something that attaches to a trailer, and you pump the concrete in there. Now pause it for a second, this concrete is sloped tremendously, as you can see right there. We'll probably have a five to six inch drop in a 18 to 19 foot span, maybe 20 foot span. Can't remember off the top of my head. But hey, let's show you guys how to do some stamped concrete real quick. So this is after we got on our, uh, the boards and we uh, got some steel on there. Uh, then we get a release agent and the concrete's pretty firm. You drop a penny, you put your fingers in, it's pretty firm and they're walking on it. You put the release agent on the actual silicone mat and the concrete. And then as you can see here, he gets his hands and he like taps it and gets it snug in place, kind of locks it in place. You don't see it here, but you actually get a tamper. It's like a big stick with a pad on it. It's right there on the left, you can see it. You stamp it down on there and then you just pull it off. And Shazay, you got yourself some stamp concrete. Very beautiful. That right there is gonna be like an eight inch barn wood look, I believe. So I wanna talk to you about this. This is dealing with the city. So we had to build a freestanding patio because if it was touching the house, we would have to be 20 feet from that back wall. But if there's a half inch gap between our patio cover and the house, then we can go five feet from the wall. I mean, this is the, how silly it is. So we have to have a one inch gap and we can build it. If, there, if it's touching the house, can't build it. But that's just some silly rules there. 
Regarding the electricity, we have two dedicated lines that were attached to the main panel. We have a 20 amp for the fireplace down there in the middle with the yellow, and we have a 15 amp breaker for the all the lights and the fans. Now this mud sill right here, we're using a pressure treated plate and we use lots of quad sealant. We end up attaching a piece of L flashing on the back side. Then we wrap it with some WRB, which is a weather resistant barrier. It's just like a big blanket that protects you, a big raincoat that protects you from the rain and uh, everything like that. You can see our wires in there. Now this is also super important to talk about. When you're gonna attach your board and batten ceiling, you have to put your plywood up there. Since it's quarter inch birch, it could bow if it's on the rafter spacing and it has to abide by the rafter spacing. So if you put plywood on your ceiling, then you could cut your birch to the exact measurements to come up with a perfect squared finish like this. They're not landing on a rafter, they're landing on the plywood and you just get this perfect finish. All the trim is going to be one by three select pine. It comes very straight, it's the best kind of pine you can get, it's a little bit more expensive. Regarding the backside, we're just using some basic T111. If you look very at the, like below the baseboard, there's actually a little piece of galvanized flashing you can see. It's like a little black piece that goes below the baseboard. And if water gets behind the T111, it kicks out there. We have the one by three select pine for our 16 on center nailing. The way we tied in the stucco was quite simple. Popped a string and framed it out. Now this was kind of a weird transition right here that you're about to see. I wanted to make sure the stucco looks right right there. But yeah, I just popped a string, framed it out. Stucco guys can attach their stuff and send it. Now, regarding the tongue and groove, a couple details I want to talk about here. Tongue and grooves go, goes right to the face where the WRB was to the studs. We make sure all the lines line up inside like the little like indent, the soffit area. Make sure all the lines line up. We're using quarter round for the corners and then we're using like a one by two type of select pine as a finish for the face of it. Now this is where it all started. We got the demo done. Here's a great before photo right here. Just a basic dirt backyard and take a look at what we did together as a team with the homeowner, designs by Savage, Joe, Nate, the whole team really transformed this backyard. They have Dolby Atmos speakers hopefully i'm saying that correctly dolby atmos speakers the surround sound with top gun is just like you're in an imax movie theater this is definitely one of a kind nobody really has this this type of rolled roof slash board and batten tongue and groove this combination of design and style you'll never see this in someone's backyard i wish you guys could see it with all of the patio grill and like the equipment set up the lights the decorations the homeowner really took it to the next level but like I said, this is great for family and entertainment. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Susan. Thank you to Juan. Thank you to Designs by Savage, the whole crew, the landscapers. We really took this on and got the job done, and it came out spectacular. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. We don't mind answering any questions you got. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all the good stuff down below. God bless, happy new year, and see you later.